Okay, Danny. So uh, welcome to Talkie United. Thank you very much. What are your first impressions of the club and obviously the club's ambitions? Um, well, obviously I'm impressed um, with the whole of the club as a whole. Um, obviously, I spoke to the gaffer and uh, Downsy quite a lot over the summer. Um, and, the, and the challenges and our aims this season, um, which I'm excited about. Um, but the club as a whole, obviously, I've had a few battles over over the years with, um, and it's always been a, a, a big club to play against. Um, it's always a fixture you look forward to to come in here and play more. Um, and you never got an easy game, that's for sure. So um, no, it's, a, it's obviously a club that I know quite well without ever playing here. Um, but finally, obviously, I'm now here and looking forward to the season ahead. Now, you've mentioned some of these battles that you've had with the club down the years. You've put in a number of impressive performances uh, against us. There's one that springs to mind, particularly when you're playing for Cheltenham and Cheltenham reduced to 10 men. You got two goals that day, for example. What do you remember most about those matches and actually the atmosphere inside Playmore? Um, probably the abuse I got from all the <laughs> No, no it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a big big atmosphere the, uh, here at Playmore. Um, you're, it, obviously, the opposition, you give as much stick as you can. And uh, I like all that side of it. Um, they sort of I feed off it a little bit. And when someone's uh, giving me a bit of stick, I tend to get a bit more out of me but um so yeah so if the fans abuse me this season we should have a good could have a good should have a good season um no it's uh, it's always an exciting game here um it's always the fans are obviously really vocal and um get the real spur on the team um which is uh i'm looking forward to being on the receiving end of that behind me pushing me on um obviously being getting some big big uh, crowds and for this division and hopefully we can use that to push on and get out for next season but you um you mentioned a few battles we've had here obviously the Cheltenham game um, we were down to 10 men early on there's probably one of my best performances Cheltenham that season um sort of led the line for us again with 10 men and obviously winning three three nil I think was the score um he's scoring to himself it was my first goals for Cheltenham so it was a uh, it was a yeah, it was a big game for me. Obviously, I've had played for Histon in the playoffs here uh, and at Histon. Um, yeah, we've had some big battles over the years. Um, looking forward to now, obviously fighting for the team, not against it. Brilliant stuff. And the boss, obviously Gary Johnson, is obviously someone you know very well from your time together at Cheltenham. And during that time, of course, you won in National League in 2015-2016. You must be delighted to be linking up with him again. And of course, Aaron Downs and, and yeah. Asa Hall as well. Yeah, yeah, there's a few faces I know here um, for the players and obviously the gaffer. Um, uh, it was sort of when we started talking, really, it was a no brainer for me. Was, I had my best season um, of my career under, under under the gaffer's tuition and guidance. And obviously, Downs, you know, who's skipper at Cheltenham, was a big influence on myself that year as well. So to speak to those in the summer um it was kind of uh when when we were able to get things signed rather than what maybe we could maybe we couldn't um so yeah once everything was sort of clearer in the summer of how last season was going to finish or or and how this next season was going to start or whatever it was kind of right it's uh it's a decision that was quite easy for me to make um um, but yeah, Asa and uh, Jake Andrews as well, who came on loan at Cheltenham. There's a few players, players who I've played with before and know very well. And um, looking forward to joining up with them again. And like I say, it's, you can't wait to get the season started now. It's been a long break. Uh, it's been a long time off, which I've used to keep myself fit and, and healthy and ready for when the season is about is ready to start. Um, but yeah, just, I just can't wait to get going now. So just touching upon that uh, that championship season with, with Cheltenham again, because it's obviously something that we very much aspire to do ourselves this season. Not only was it a highly successful season for the team, it was also a, a great one for you personally, wasn't it? You got, I think it was 22 goals that season. What do you think was the secret to the team's success? And uh, what is it that Gary Johnson does that uh, brings out the best in, in a player like yourself? Well, so when I signed, when... Obviously, we had a whole new team um, or 11 debutants that season when because uh, Cheltenham obviously got relegated the, the season before. Um, and it was instilled in us from day one that we were 
going to be challenging for promotion um, as it had to happen for the club. Um, and uh, it was, and the players we had, it just the whole blend of it worked. We had a, one of the best team sort of camaraderies, team spirit throughout the whole, from the, through the youngsters to the up senior pros. Um, through the whole mix of everybody just worked and uh, it, we had that click and then once obviously we were getting results on the pitch um, it just bre sort of breathed confidence in us and we just took it and just rode up to the end of the season um, but obviously the gaffer was a massive inspiration in, in getting us to that performance and making us believe that we were good enough to win the league and then once the season sort of moved on and getting towards the final stages it was like our team spirit was had that in us and it was no, we won by quite a margin in the end, uh, considering um, it didn't feel that comfortable, obviously, at times throughout the season. But um, you needed that drive throughout the season. You needed to, to it's, you can't be overconfident. You needed to make sure, right, that wasn't, we want, may have won a game, but there was some things that you need to work on, and etc. Um, and that keeps you on your toes and ready. And you're always trying to learn, always trying to uh, better yourself and, um, and believing that you, your actions and your decisions can influence how your season pans out and the whole club and all, the whole team had that team spirit uh, right through the whole club as well actually it was through the fans and um, the, obviously the coaching staff and uh, I believe that we're, we're trying to build that here as well for this season. Um, I spoke to a few of the players and this, they seem to obviously build on the success and um, the promotion that you had here a couple of seasons ago um, I feel like we're ready to go one more this season and get and get promoted to the league. I mean, the National League is, is obviously a division that you're very much accustomed to. It takes a particular uh, mindset, not not just the, the players, to actually be successful in this division, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have to keep going. <laughs> you can't. Uh, a lot of people can get knocked down and um, sort of go into your shell a bit or let things affect you quite a lot. Um, you certainly can't let that happen at this level um, as well. Someone was ready to pounce on you um, and ready to sort of knock you further down if uh, if you ever feel down. So, um, is it, I mean, sometimes the quality ain't, ain't as good as obviously the leagues above, but um, you do need to be tenacious. You do need to have that drive and you do need to be hungry for success um, at any level, really, but at this level as well. Um, there's a mixture as well at, at this level. You, it's, um, it's not always pure football. As you've got teams that will, every team will offer something different against you. Um, if it's direct, or, or you get some teams to play football at this level now as well. So you have to be sort of, uh, what's the word? You have to sort of be adaptable um, to 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 each game situation um, uh, and be ready for whatever any club, any team's going to throw at you. But um, obviously I've done all right, I'm still going, I feel as fit as I ever have. Um, so uh, I'm looking forward to the season ahead, I'm looking forward to having one of my best seasons uh, ahead. I'm not here just to make up the numbers, I'm definitely here fit and raring to go and uh, I'm hoping for another successful one to add to a few I've had at this level already. Well, that's exactly what the Yellow Army want to hear. That's, that's fantastic <laughs> stuff, Danny. Now, you're obviously a vastly experienced player. You represent a number of clubs in, in the National League in particular, like we just mentioned. What can the Yellow Army look forward to seeing from you next season? What, what are your main strengths? What can they look forward to seeing when you're out on that pitch? Um, well, it's probably they've seen me play enough times <laughs> over the years. Uh, it's, it's all out. Um, you're 100%. I'll give you work rate no matter what's happening on on the pitch, it's all how, how the day's going. I'll, you know, I'll run myself into the ground for the club um, and I'll be doing that week in, week out. And obviously being a, the main around that, as you can't just, you need a bit of quality as well with that work rate, obviously. Um, but yeah, I'll have a, just a target man up, up front to link up play for the, for the attacking options of, uh, in the squad. Um, and hopefully that will build a platform for us to go forward and score plenty of goals this season. I know the Gaffer's sort of philosophy is uh, to score 
score more goals than the other opposition um, to play some exciting football. So I'm looking forward to being a part of that and hopefully be a, a main figure up, up top there to help myself get goals, um, but also help uh, uh, strike partners and other attacking players uh, get goals around that as well. You are a, a real number nine, aren't you? And I understand that that, that number nine uh, figures quite prominently <laughs> yeah. in your uh, family, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, which is a bit, I was disappointed, obviously, not to be number nine at Solihull, is uh, had to change my son's name to 2019 when I was at Solihull. <laughs> now I've got to change him back again. But uh, no, it's, um, yeah, it's obviously, uh, I've been a number nine throughout most of my career. And um, Ronnie I had a special season at Cheltenham. Um, and when Ronnie was born, sort of around just after Christmas, um, it was the missus idea actually. She mentioned, oh, well, we were like talking about loads of different names. And she said, what about your football, like number nine? She like, I love that. Like there's a middle name, for example. Um, originally I was like, no chance. It's like, I'll get, I'll get ripped for it for the rest of my career. Um, but the more we talked about it, the more it grew on me. And I quite, yeah, it's quite, I quite liked it. Um, so yeah, so, Ronnie Nine was born. Ronnie Nine, right? Was born, um, named, and uh, yeah, sort of. That that was that. Really, we won the league, and then um, we were singing Ronnie Ronnie in the cup when we won the league, and with Ronnie Nine was sitting. I got a picture of Ronnie sitting in the in the trophy. Um, so yeah, it's a uh, that's that. Ronnie Nine, right? Is it's sort of a a nod just to my career uh, being a number nine. Um, Hopefully, I'll be a, a championship winning number nine for you to, for the goals this season. Um, if I am, I promise I'll put Ronnie in the cup again. I don't know if he'll fit now. He's a bit bigger than what he was back then, <laughs> but uh, we'll give it a go. Yeah, because the gaff fans left a message here saying that, are you happy with the name Ronnie 31, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know what your thoughts are. That might be something you yeah. need to discuss with him. But, uh... Uh, well, no, maybe yeah, I might have to. <laughs> make that phone call after this then, just to make sure. <laughs> and finally, Danny, what are your hopes for the season ahead? Maybe on both a team perspective and an individual perspective? Um, well, I think the aim is for us to get promotion. Um, there's no reason why I don't think we can't achieve that. Um, looking at the squad we've got, looking at the signings um, that we'll be making, uh, it's, that I'm looking to be competitive this year. Um, my hunger certainly hasn't uh, died over over my years, I'm still as hungry as ever um, to get that again. Uh, get back into the football league would be great uh, for me personally. Um, for the club as well, it's obviously a massive club at this level. Um, I said earlier, playing over the years, um, it would be a, a, a great stadium to play for if we're successful this year. Um, it would be, a, great, it'd be a, a big voice behind us cheering us if we could get promotion this year, which obviously is, is the aim. Um, and scoring a hat full of goals amongst that would be great as well. But um, if I'm, as long as I'm contributing to the team, playing well, uh, and, and us, us as a team are scoring plenty of goals um, and we gain promotion, then that's the job done. Brilliant. Well, Danny, thank you for joining us today. And Cheers, again, welcome to Play More. Thank you very much. Thanks.